Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some animated lower thirds overlays, a little bit like this one and this one, in order to make your videos look that little bit more appealing and professional and stand out amongst the competition. And we're going to be doing this in one of my favorite online tools, Canva, which is the perfect choice for fast and powerful graphics design that anybody can do. So if you're new to video editing, you're wondering what a lower thirds is, it's basically like one of these little small graphics that overlays the video and pops in from the side. So it could be something that has my name on it, it could be something that is labeling the step that we're on or something on screen. It's basically just like an additional bit of uh, graphics that, that appears on the video. But it doesn't appear by magic, you've got to put it there. Sometimes these are built into your video editors. I use a, an application called Filmora, and it already has some preset lower thirds that you can add in and just customise a little bit. But by doing it in Canva, we've got a lot more flexibility. We can basically design our own, choose what we want on there, and it's a really simple process. And that's what we're going to jump into in two seconds. So before I reveal all, you've got to remember there are 31 million YouTube channels out there. So any little touches, any little additional components that we can add in that makes it just that little bit better experience for the viewer, then let's take it, let's grab it. So let's jump into the video now. I'm going to show you how you can really easily create these yourself. Okay, so we've just gone to canva.com to create these uh, lower thirds templates that we're going to put as overlays in our YouTube videos. Now, there's no set template for this, so we're going to click on create a design, and we basically want a rectangle. Um, so, there's no, like I said, there's no set templates. We're going to click on custom dimensions, and uh, let's just go for 1200 by 250, um, but anything within that range, as long as it's a rectangle, you should be all right. Now what you'll find is on the left hand side, uh, Canva will actually suggest us some templates that we can use. So if you just want to get started quickly, we can just choose one of these and build on it. Um, so there's different ways you can do it. The other option is to click on the actual empty space there. And on that left hand side, you've got various photos. There's over 60 million photos for the pro users. You've got elements, which is lots of like little drawings, doodles, uh, stickers. So you can build your own up and um, backgrounds as well. So just as an example, let's just do a background one and we'll just pick a bright yellow background. You can put different patterns and textures and images in as well. Um, and then let's go to elements. So uh, we'll use this musical notes that I used before. So this musical note here, we can just expand it. And like I say, I'm not the most creative person in the world, so I'm sure you can do much better than me. Um, but we can expand that. We can then copy and paste another version and shrink that down. Um, it's wh whatever your channel is about, really. It's, it's however you want it to look. So let's pop that one at the end. And then we just add some text in as well. So you've got a text button on the left-hand side. So click on that and then add a heading. And then what we'll do, we'll just put some sample text in there. So this bit really depends on what it is that you actually want to show on the screen. So in this case, we're just going to put introduction, but it could be the name of a person. It could be the, uh, the section that you're talking about. We'll just keep it very simple. I'll leave you to kind of figure out the semantics of what you're actually offering on yours. Um, at the top here, we can change the font and there's tons and tons of different fonts in uh, Canva. So let's just change it to this one. So that's how you would kind of build one from scratch. But like I said before, if we click on add new page and there was some templates at the top here. So let's click on templates and it give us some suggestions. So like I say, my design skills are not brilliant. So we can always just use one of these as something to get us started really. So let's choose, let's choose this one. So as simple as that, they've put together quite a nice little design. You can see if I click on these to see how these kind of move independently. So these are these little elements. So we'll drop that back there um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll write introduction here as well. And we'll change that font because that font does not work at all with, uh, with that background. So let's use this. And we'll just center that up. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can actually move it around until you see these little bright pink crosshairs in the middle. Not the easiest to see on a bright pink background. Or you can click on position and then align it. And we're going to align it to the center. And I was going to say align it to the middle, but it's already in the middle. So my main recommendation is that we're actually consistent with our approach. So throughout your video, you don't necessarily want completely different designs. So let's copy this page. Now we've got two of these now. So then it could be that you've just done your introduction to your video and then you're going to talk about, um, I don't know, step one, which is um, how to get started, how to start. 
So we could put that in there. If you wanted, you could vary it up a slightly. You could click on that background and maybe maybe change the color so that you've got the same design but ever so slightly different uh, colors. So let's just leave it like that for an example. And again, you can copy the page and you can put the next one on. Um, it's just about consistency with your design, really. Let's go back to the bright pink for that one. And this one can just be a call to action at the end. So uh, it could be uh, subscribe and now. So like I say, you make whatever you want up in these. I'm just using these in examples. Um, let's delete that top one because we don't really need that. We'll just use these ones. Now, one thing about Canva that I do like is they've brought in this animate option. So you see in the top left-hand corner here, it says animate. So if we click on that, there's various different effects. Some of them are pro effects, some of them are standard. So we've got that block, fade, rise. Now you can put effects on in your video editor, but I just think it makes a nice little touch having a mirror as well. So let's use fade. I quite like that one. And we'll put that on all of them. Um, they've just changed it now so that you can actually put individual animations on each page. It used to be that you had to pick one that would do for all of them. Um, so we'll, we'll use that just for exa example's sake. We'll use that for all of them. So there you go, we're pretty much done. That is our lower thirds. Now what's going to happen, because we've clicked animate there, when we export them and download them, it's going to download them as an MP4. It's going to create them as videos. So you have to tick each one individually so that you get a separate video for each one. So I'll just set them going. Okay, so one other thing I'm going to show you is if you wanted to use a different shape, it's not that possible when you're using animations. I'm going to show you why. It may be that you want to just create a photo file, a PNG file. So let's add a new page in here and just delete the background it's put in. Now, I'm going to actually use an element here. So I'm actually going to use a, um, let's just use a square for now. And we're going to create um, the rectangle shape that we've been using, but I'm not going to fill that entire screen. I'm going to show you why. Um, let's change the color of that. Let's use a yellow. Remember, you can use elements, you can use photos, you can add whatever you want on there. Now, one of the things I am going to use is one of these uh, frames. Now, if we click on that, this frame basically is if we drag a photo into it, it will automatically size that photo into that window. And if we just go to uploads, I've got a picture of myself in there. I'm going to drag that in and you'll see, see how it kind of uh, resizes it automatically and puts it in that little frame. So then we'll just move it slightly. So the reason I'm showing you this is basically if you ever wanted to use almost like a custom shape, I'm going to show you the, uh, the, the issues with it. If we make this a video, which is what these are because they're animated, it downloads it as a video, an MP4 file, then the problem we're going to have is this white bit here is going to show. You're going to see basically a block of white and it isn't going to look right at all. Whereas if we save it as a photo, we can make that transparent and it'll just add sort of a little extra touch to our uh, overlays, our lower thirds. So let's just add some text in there. I'm just going to copy and paste the one from up here and obviously change the color of that and shrink it down. And like I say, it's, uh, it isn't the greatest looking design, but it'll do for now. So I'll show you both ways of doing this. So we'll click on animate and we'll add that effect. Now, if I go to download that page, you'll see in a second, it basically wants to download it as a video, which is a problem. But I'm going to show you in a second in the video editor why it's a problem. So that's downloaded. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn the animation off and I'm going to download that as a PNG and do you see this button here transparent background that's the one that I want so let's scroll down select that uh, picture and transparent background and download that as well and I'll show you why that's useful in a moment so what I've done is I've just jumped over to my video editor called Filmora. Now, this isn't about which video editor to use. There's tons of different options, loads of loads that are on the market. It was whatever feels best to you. But this is the one I like. This is the one I use. So I'm just going to go and grab all them files we just cre created and then import them. So as you can see, I've just dragged and dropped them. Now, well, let's just have a look at some examples. You can see here, this is the ones we've just created. If I copy that introduction one there... We've then got the video that we've just created. So we would just shrink that down slightly because if you think about what's in the background, in fact, let's do this an easier way. Let's copy these above my existing video. So there you go. There's me talking and you're going to have this lower thirds coming in on the bottom of the screen. 
So if we just press play, it'll give us a little bit of a, a view of how it would look. Here, let's grab it. So let's jump into the video now. I'm going to show you how you can really easily create these yourself. So that's how it would look. It kind of does what we need it to do. You can make that more rectangular if you like. You can stretch it. You can change your dimensions in Canva. Periodically through the video, we basically just add in the relevant lower thirds. Now, this is what I wanted to show you from before. So here is the subscribe video that we added, and this is what I'm, I was trying to tell you. So you can you see how we've got this ugly white box around it? Um, so it looks awful, and basically we want that to be transparent. Now the reason that isn't transparent is because it's a video, we animated it. So sometimes it's better not to animate them. So if I delete that, and then I'll show you the actual picture file that we created, that's the same, but without the animation. Now do you see how we've got a different, um, a different style on that? It's a... It's a different shape. There you go. So do you see how we've got a different style on that now? It's a different shape. It looks slightly different, um, but it is a static file. Now, in Filmora, it's easy enough because if I double-click on that file and then click on Motion, I've got various different options that I can use here. So one of the ones that I like to use is called To The Right, and if we just press Play, you'll just see this come in now. Let's jump into the video now. I'm going to show you how you can... So it bounces in and it's got its own kind of animation to it as well. So it's up to you. You can use the animations in Canva just to quickly add them effects and import them as videos. Or you can create static images if your video editor has some uh, effects that you can add as well. But uh, it depends. If you're just happy with a rectangular shape, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using Canva to create these. Um, they can be pretty effective and you're not reliant on all of the ones that the actual video editor produces. Because it could be that there's only 5 or 10 options you can choose from whereas with these ones you can create them whenever you want you can change them for every video if you prefer and you can keep working on your various different designs so there you go a really simple and effective way of using canva in order to improve your youtube videos now there are loads more benefits and features of canva and that's why i recently took the decision to upgrade to canva pro so if you want to know why i upgraded to canva pro and you want 12 reasons why maybe you should upgrade to canva pro watch the next video thanks for watching